Welcome back to another awesome video. Today we're going to be looking at this B-Link mini Windows PC. It looks and very small. It is small. This PC was on sale recently for $159.20 from Amazon.com. And in what was surely the result of a drunken brawl between the marketing and search engine departments, the official name of this device is the B-Link Mini's Mini PC Windows 11 Pro Computers with Intel 11th Gen 4 cores, 2.9 N95, 8 gig DVR, 4 RAM, 256 gig SSD, dual HDMI, 4K Ethernet, blah, 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 support. That's button. a very long title. Yeah, I think they need a short. We're just going to call it the B-Link Mini Windows PC. Much like the quality of cheap wine that comes in a bag, I did not expect much from a PC that arrived in a bag and cost less than $200. However, I was very pleasantly surprised with this PC. It seems like it's going to do the job great. And it's a good buy since it comes with an activated copy of Windows 11 Professional. It arrived for me in about four days. And inside the box, we've of course got the PC itself. We've got some screws, a wall mounting bracket, a couple of HDMI cables for the dual outputs on the back, and this power cord, which uh, the power cord's a little short. You might need an extension cord for that one, but this PC is for my parents to use as a home media PC with their television. They were using this Dell from a few years ago, but it died recently. So I got them this and decided to test it out as a media PC. First in this video, we're going to show the results of some of these tests. Then we're going to talk about how long it took to set this thing up and what I did. And finally, let's comment in a little bit more detail on why even in 2023, having a PC is a good idea, not just relying on like a Roku or an Apple TV or something. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Let's get into it. Okay. For these tests, I use both 1080p and 4K resolution, as well as wired and Wi-Fi connections. One of the main things this PC will be used for is watching YouTube videos. First thing I did was try out YouTube on a 1080p monitor and the PC was connected with an ethernet cable and it worked fine. I had no problems as you can see here watching 1080p video and seeking around on YouTube in full screen. It does, of course, it doesn't feel as fast as a big PC with a discrete graphics card, but it works really well. Uh, next, I moved to a 4K monitor. So don't download Microsoft Flight Simulator on this. No, you it can't. It will explode. Yeah, you know, I mean, it only has a 256 gig uh, drive, so I don't think there would be enough space. Uh, next, I moved on to a 4K computer monitor and tried YouTube again, and it worked fine there too. However, I did start to notice a little more sluggishness when starting the video at first or switching between full screen and regular screen modes. Regular screen. Yeah, or you know what I mean. Let's try the uh, multiple tab test. Let's open some of these things in new tab, load it down a little bit, and just see what it does. Welcome to another awesome video. Let's start out this video by... Yeah, see there's a little bit of sluggish here going to full screen. That, that took a second. About the opera. This is a small... And then send a post request with XML to the stereo receiver or... I picked for it before you. Let's go to that. 2160. Yeah. Starting to know Lotus a little slow. Anyway, I also repeated these tests using Wi Fi on a 4K TCL television and an older Toshiba 1080p television instead of monitors. And on the 4K side, it actually felt a little bit smoother on the television. In this example, I'm on a, on a 4K television about 50 feet uh, from the Wi Fi router behind a wall. I didn't really notice any problems with YouTube uh, at all. For our next test, we took a Blu-ray uh, file from Terminator 2 here. And we Hasta la vista, baby. Yes. So this test is going to be large file playback over my local area network. So basically the file is sitting out there on a the server. It's about 26 gig in size. And we're going to attempt to play it on this PC with VLC. I clicked on it. Playback started in just a few seconds. And I was accessing the file and moving throughout the movie with no problem. I also tried playing back some home videos. Uh, here is a video of sort of pre-COVID Disney. I, it's a 4K video file and it worked great too. No problems playing back local files over the network on this PC. Moving up to a 4K monitor, again encountered no problems with file playback of the network. I did see a little bit of a delay on 4K with Wi-Fi or seeking in a large 4K file, but it generally caught up in under a second. It did take a second also, or two for it to catch it. It's just really inconsistent. That might be Again, yeah, once it's going, it's going, it's fine. Uh, it's not there much. And for our next and final test, we're going to use live TV with Plex server. Now, this is more complicated because you're talking about streaming from a HD home run to the Plex server, then re-encoding and going back to the PC's browser. 
Anyway, um, so yeah, so live TV seemed to work fine once it got going. Live TV is depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. Don't recommend watching no local news, but generally what we do with live TV is just watch a pre recorded DVR file because it's so much quicker to skip commercials. And, you know, on my PC, I have optical out and I can get Dolby Digital. But anyway, I tested that and it worked fine as well. So, in general, this PC looks works pretty good. I mean, you know, it's it's not going to be able to probably, you know, do a lot of gaming or whatever. And there's other in-depth reviews on... on no, that's the only part I don't like about it. Well, I, mean, I can't do gaming. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more reviews online about this PC if you Google it. But we, they get into the technical specs and maybe upgrades, whatnot. But this is just kind of out of the box, you know, what it does uh, with a home media type tasks. So I think it's going to do just fine. Next part of the video, we're going to talk about how long it took me to set this up, what I did, and then finally... What show are you playing? What? Oh, that's a uh, SWAT team or something. I don't know. So this, is, so this is live TV on, Ple on Plex coming through my web server. We could actually compare that to live TV on the actual Roku box. If we go to live TV here, right here, coming just direct to the TV from the antenna. Uh, let's see. So here. It's kind of a lie, isn't it? If I hadn't forced Keith to drive. If I this definitely looks a little bit clearer to me. So, Here's what the BIOS looks like, by the way. Really old school DOS look. Anyway, got this thing out of the box. First thing I did was I lied to Microsoft and said I have no internet and said all the bright privacy stuff. I don't want to be tied to a Microsoft account. So I set up a local account uh, before I even connected to the network. Next, I prevented the PC from hiding things from me. I set Windows Explorer to show file extensions, and I set the taskbar to show all icons, so I always know what's running on this thing. Wait, does, that all, does all the devices in your home already hide stuff from you? Microsoft, don't get me started on Microsoft. We'll do a rant on Windows 11. I hadn't used Windows 11 yet. and Young Rock. Yeah. I think I was filmed in Memphis. Yeah. Next thing I did was installed Chrome and VLC, which are probably my most frequently used media apps. Then I applied all the outstanding Windows updates, which for this PC took yeah maybe between 30 and 40 minutes. Next, I removed OneDrive and Microsoft Teams from startup because I don't really care about having those. Then I enabled network uh, file sharing so I get to my local file system. And finally, I enabled automatic login so the PC will boot completely into Windows and log into my account. So here's a little timing of how long it takes this thing to boot up after a restart. I have a little stopwatch deal. Where? Where about 30 seconds? Yeah, that's about 34 seconds from running to restart. That's pretty good. Notice we didn't have to log in, and we can just click the browser and go right to YouTube or whatever. Cool. And that's all the setup I needed to do from out of the box to get a working media PC. It probably took about an hour, maybe a little extra since I was filming and taking all these screenshots and so forth. Uh, the final step I always do on a new PC while the image is small is make an image backup because that way if I expand the SSD to a bigger one or somebody installs something and it messes everything up, I can always revert back to this state with a nice fresh copy of uh, activated Windows. So if you made it this far in the video, you may be asking yourself, <laughs> self, why did I watch this stuff? Why, why use a PC at all? I mean, after all, I can do this with my smart TV or my Roku or whatever, but so all those little streaming devices are great and Roku can get you a long way and we use mostly Roku on our TCL TV here, but at some point you will be at the mercy of your app or platform's limitations and restrictions. Let's talk, let's take a look at YouTube for example. I mean, not only having this, you know, a simple wireless keyboard to do a search is great. Also the YouTube app as of right now, you can't, you can't always see everything the person's uploaded, you know, but if you're, you know, for example, they may rearrange their channel and the app doesn't show you all their uploads but like like here's an example with dude perfect you know you've got most recent stuff or whatever but they can change the channel and you can't get to it through the app it, the same way with a pc you've always got this oh video. yeah with thanksgiving stereotypes i couldn't see that re recent video yeah yeah like yeah but with a pc you just click on videos and all the or uploads or something and all their stuff is there in reverse chronological order so the pc just gives you more freedom more options next there's like legal disputes you know we've all seen news articles about roku threatening to remove YouTube TV, and they removed VidAngel and all this other stuff. Why would they remove VidAngel? A lot of times these platforms will get into arguments, remove the app, or either you have an older smart TV with an older version of the app that doesn't get upgraded. Anyway, you're, you're, you're just locked in too much. With the PC, the browser's always updated. It's very flexible, and you can get by a lot of these restrictions.
that's about it. You know, this is just a quick review. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye.